With that, we'll get started with Sonia Citron and Maddie Westbelt. Tyler Horka, Blue and Gold Illustrated. I've got one for both of you guys, the same question. Third time that you guys are going into the NCAA tournament, I'm curious, just on the eve of it, what feels the same as the other two times and maybe what feels a little bit different? Um, I think what feels the same is kind of just that that feeling of a new season. Um, practice is different. The energy every day is really consistent, and I think everybody's just kind of on the same page of, like, it's 0-0 zero, zero now. Um, I would say something that feels different this year is kind of just that chip that we have on our shoulder. Um, you know, we're kind of – we rode a high for a little bit with the ACC tournament, um, and I think right now we're just – we're really getting settled, um, and we're really just trying to stay consistent um, and – Treat it like we're the underdogs. Yeah, uh, similar to what Maddie said, I think a lot of it does feel similar just because this is our third time doing it now. Um, and I think different, what feels different is also that chip on our shoulder because I know like mid season, people didn't even know if we were going to host or what was going on. So just like we, we proved we could do it and we still have a lot more to prove. So. And then one more for me for Sony. Last year you were in the unique position of playing point guard and, and kind of playing do everything for this team, but now you have someone that does that really well in Hannah. So I'm curious going into this, I guess how comforting, comforting is that to know that you have a legit point guard and, and you can kind of play your game while she's going to play hers and Maddie's going to play hers and you know the rest kind of takes yeah. care of itself. Uh, I mean, it's definitely nice. Um, I, I'm not a point guard, so I didn't I didn't love doing that. Um, but yeah, I mean it's just nice that I feel like I can play my true position and just play the game that I know I can play with Hannah being the point guard and you know just doing what she does and I'm gonna do what I do to the best of my ability and I know Maddie will do the same. But like we can all be true to our position. So Eric Hansen with Inside ND Sports, um, Maddie. Catherine was part of some pretty good teams here, and I wondered, um, do you guys talk about the NCAA experience? And, and if so, you know, what does she have that's good wisdom for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, she's overseas right now in Hungary, so it's a little bit of um, different time zone, so it's hard to communicate sometimes. But, um, you know, she's always, we've always talked about it. I've, you know, I've watched her for a long time, and. We have conversations of just how locked in you got to be with your team um, and how much it doesn't matter anything off the court. Um, all, the only thing that matters is the chemistry that you guys have on the court um, and how much you guys are on the same page. And so, like I said, I think we're in a good spot with that. Um, but yeah, Catherine's always said, just, just make sure that you're in rhythm with your teammates, um, no matter what it is, if it's high or if it's low. And then just growing up, how much did she influence um, who you became as a person, who you became as a basketball player? And, and if you guys still ever play competitively, does it get chippy? Um, yeah, she was my biggest role model since I was a little kid. I wanted to be just like her. Um, you know, I did literally everything just like her because she just, everything that she is about is true. Um, she's so authentic to herself. And she's just somebody that works so hard, and she's a champion in everything that she does. And so it's no wonder that she has a ring because of it. Um, because in every in every detail of her life outside of the court, she's just like that. And so um, it's nice that she has an accolade to prove just those little details that she ensues in the, in her whole life. Um, but yeah, she's she's everything to me. So thank you. And one for Sony, uh, I'm, I'm curious who in your family influenced you, especially from a toughness as aspect to help, you know, develop or help you become the person that we see as a really tough competitor on the court. Yeah, um, I have to give that to my brothers and my cousins. Um, growing up, I was, I was two, three, four years younger than all of them, but we played in the backyard every single day. Um, and they never, ever took it easy on me, whether it was soccer, basketball, handball. Like, they would treat me like I was one of the guys. So I'd definitely give it to them. 
Kurt Rallo, Associated Press. This is for Sony. You referenced maybe mid-season. You guys weren't sure if you'd be hosting. Um, I think after that NC State game, maybe you dropped to like 17 or so. What turned things around so you have the seed you have and, and that you're playing at home? Yeah, um, I think the NC State game was definitely a wake-up call. Um, and I think after that game, our team really got together and we we had a meeting. We we talked to each other and we we were just like we need to figure figure it out because this is not how our season's going to go. So I think um, it was after that game that we really just took the steps we needed to to get back on the same page and we did that. So Anthony Anderson. Anthony Anderson, South Bend Tribune. Uh, I have the same question for both of you. You've both done a remarkable job playing uh, foul free. You've never fouled out of a game, Sony, and, and you've only fouled out one this year, Maddie. Um, with the depth so compromised, uh, do, you, do you have to be constantly conscious of fouls? And are you able to play free and easy the way you want to play, or do you have to adjust to the officiating? That's for both of you. Um, I would say we can't play as freely as we want to. Um, definitely have to adjust just because we can't afford any fouls, especially early on in the game. So I'll always tell like my teammates, be smart in the first half and then maybe second half if you have zero or if, if you have one foul, then you could play more aggressive on, you know, just, just play more aggressive because we can't really afford people to get one or two fouls in the first half. So we definitely got to play smarter and just adjust our game a little bit. Yeah, I would say the same thing. Just kind of start out, um, read the read the refs, read how everybody is calling it, um, and just play from there. If they're letting things go, then you can be more aggressive. If not, then you kind of got to step off and just play solid. We'll have time for just one more question here, folks. Matt Lucas, Goshen News for both of you guys. Um, during this eight-game win streak and this ACC tournament run, how important has the defense been to getting you guys out to leads? and being able to hold them throughout the rest of the game, even with the, the depth concerns? It's everything. It's the way that we start playing defense. Um, I think that's been the key to us for these last eight games is just how we start on the defensive end and how that continues um, and carries on to the offensive end. So, you know, with this team, we're a trending team. Um, and our identity is on defense. And I think that's something that we haven't experienced really yet. But right now, I think we're just we're just trying to ride that, and yeah, like I said, it's just the beginning of games. Yeah, um, I, I think Maddie said it all. <laughs> we can we can actually probably fit one more in if anybody else has a, another question here. I, I just had a, a follow up for Sony. Was it a, a players uh, initiated meeting that you had? Was it players only, or yeah. did the coaches say, "Hey, you guys need to talk"? Uh, no, it was it was players only. It was um, I think it, more Maddie. Maddie texted the group chat. She took it upon herself as the senior and leader she is, um, and got everyone together. And yeah, it was players only. I have a couple, uh, Kurt Rallo, Associated Press, I have a couple questions. Doug Feinberg uh, wanted me to ask, he's doing a feature on coaches who are coaching at their alma mater. Uh, did you ever think you'd be doing this when you were playing or did you have another career path? No, this is a dream, you know. Um, I didn't realize that coaching was gonna be my next step after playing um, professionally. So when I got into coaching, I never would have imagined my first head coaching job be here at my alma mater, so I'm, I'm blessed. Um, what was it like when you got the job? Is it more rewarding or is there more pressure, more challenging being at your alma mater? For sure, um, taking over in COVID and the, the pandemic was really challenging. And so um, that was an adjustment for me. My press conference was via Zoom. So not to tr the traditional first year um, head coach and then the year after it was NIL and the transfer portal. So. Um, I came in the, ch the climate of changing, uh, the climate of athletics was changing the, the year that I um, had this opportunity. So I've adjusted to it. Um, and then the expectation of this program and also following a legend. So um, I've adjusted to it. Um, again, it's a blessing, but it's definitely different from what a first time head coach would have to experience. Tyler Horka, Blue and Gold Illustrated. Neil, I'm curious what you remember about the 2018 run to the national championship game. 
the similar roster numbers that you guys had then. So do you draw on how you guys managed that and kind of implement some of those things into this run? And just what are your overall thoughts of, of maybe only having six players that you can rely on? Right. Well, we're at the time where it's just survive in advance. So no matter how many numbers we have, you have to come prepared, ready to play. Um, for me, I, ha I do have the blueprint of what we wh what we did during that year as far as practice, performance, um, recovery. So I have an idea of um, those type of things, and I've implemented those things. Unfortunately, we had very similar situation last year. So understanding what this team needs, I've just pivoted from the Virginia Tech game, losing Kylie. Just have have had to pivot, change roles. You know, started a, a, a new starter. So when things happen this way, um, things you can't control, you just have to pivot. So that's what I've done. But um, I try to lean on those experiences of what I've learned as an assistant in, in that year. And speaking of last year, I asked Sony what it was like to kind of be the point guard and. <laughs> do it all player and she just explicitly said I, I'm not a point guard <laughs> this year you have one and, mm -hmm. and one of the best ones in the country so I'm curious what that's like going into the tournament knowing you have a, a player that's going to handle the ball every single possession and you have confidence in her to do that yes absolutely I think it takes pressure off of our guards for sure you know last year was I had to manipulate the offense for KK and Sony to run the point. This year I have a true point guard who happens to be a great scorer so, and a great defender. So it definitely takes a lot of pressure off of our guards. Um, you know, Hannah has led us the entire season, so she has that uh, experience now. This is her first time in the NCAA, so it's going to be a little bit different for her. Um, but she has a lot of support around her, and Sony and KK also help back up the point. So we fit, managed it in the past couple weeks and, and months. So um, I'm looking forward to you know, going out there and, and seeing us play. Coach, I, with, with the limited numbers, I imagine practice is even more challenging. But I know that you have um, a way of practicing even when you have a full roster. Can mm -hmm. you talk about how you prepare for teams both with a full roster and with this limited roster? Yes, um, everything's purposeful for this limited roster. Um, I still do the same uh, the same concepts. You know, I'm really big on player development, so I always find time within practice to work on um, individual skill work. You know, guard, forward um, type position work. Um, you know, my my practice is always um, are energetic, so I'm always trying to cultivate energy within the drills that I do. With a full roster, or without a full roster, you just have to be smarter. You know, some things you have to do more half court. Um, I try to limit full court activity when it's closer to the games. Luckily, before today, we've had opportunity to use practice guys that can help us compete and takes a lot of um, reps off of our um, you know, seven that are active. So I just try to um, impu or implement things, concepts that's going to help us, but also be very intentional with the number that we have. Now, early on when I had a full roster, I can get up and down more. I can do a lot of things more. Practices could have been a lot longer. Now their practices are shortened just because once we get the reps, I move on. How many practice guys do you have and how do you find the right people for that? Right, so we have a rotation of probably about 10 or 12 guys that are um, committed to our program that help us. Now they have different requirements as far as academics and classes and exams, so sometimes we don't have the same um, same guys, but we have like a rotation of 10 to 12 and um, they're, they're awesome. They, they come, come to all the games, sometimes they travel to our games. Um, and I'm sure a, lot, a lot of programs in the country have practice players that help. So I'm very fortunate that I have a group that's committed to help us. Nat Marshall started her career here injured, and, and then it seemed like it was a struggle to become a contributing player just through the injuries. Um, what's this been, year been like for her, and what makes you optimistic about her best basketball going forward? Well, this has been her healthiest year, so I've always, even coming into this season, just so proud of her for going through a lot of adversity, like you mentioned. She came in, recovered from an ACL from her senior year in high school, and as you saw early on in the season, she was just playing her best basketball, very confident, but also just making an impact consistently. And so, um, so now, you know, I, I think her stepping into this role, she's prepared, she's ready, um, she's maximizing this opportunity, and I thought she was fantastic um, in the ACC championship game. Anthony Anderson, South Bend Tribune. Neil, uh, Sony said that she, she has to play conscious of, of the foul situations, especially with the limited depth. How well have your players done with that this year? Very limited disqualifications in games, and how mindful will they have to be, if it's even different in the tournament uh, this week? Right, well, let me knock on some wood on that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they're very um, conscious about um, defending without fouling. We've been working with that 
for a while. You know, we had a game at Pitt that we dealt with a lot of foul trouble back in January, and we really adjusted from that. That was an example for us to, that we have to defend without fouling. Um, it's definitely something you have to adjust to in the game. We talk about that a lot. You know, I, sh I throw in a little bit of 2-3 zone to try to help us, but um, you, have to, you have to see how the uh, officiate, officials are calling the game, and you have to adjust. And I think my team is very, very smart, um, very experienced, so they understand um, what's at stake as far as um, us having a, a lower roster number where we can't afford to be in foul trouble. So just praying that that con continues. <laughs> And my second question, unrelated, uh, Megan arrived here a, a couple of years after you were, a year or two after you were done. But I'm curious, how well do you know each other and how meaningful or cool is it that uh, there's two Notre Dame alums coaching here this weekend? Right. Um, well, just knowing her from just being an alum and some of our um, alum alumni events. But yeah, I think it's really cool to have um, another a Notre Dame alum here and also uh, their AD, you know, graduate from Notre Dame. So I think it's a lot of Notre Dame ties, which is also, is also amazing. Carallo, AP. Um, your players had a meeting. They called among themselves after the NC State game. It wasn't looking that maybe you'd be here. What did you, what did that say about uh, your players as far as you were concerned and what did you see got you here to this point? Yeah, I mean, just credit to our leaders. Uh, Maddie, Sony um, just stepped up and just talked about, um, you know, them getting together to try to figure out things that they can get better at as a unit. And we were dealing with a lot of inconsistency in our play, and that was obviously a really tough loss at home. And so they kind of put a mirror to their face. I put a mirror to their face right after as well. Um, it kind of talked about what we needed to do to fix this and to get better. We had a, a road game at Duke, a big Monday game on you know, two, two or three days later from that NC State game, and we had to bounce back. We had to find a way to find cohesiveness, and I thought that meeting was great, and sometimes you need that. You need just um, redirection, refocus, and I feel like they did that, and everybody kind of stepped up, and instead of being more one-on-one, -on -one, um, or just, not even one-on-one, -on -one, but just trying to, f they did a great job of finding a way to come together, and um, I think that's where the, the progression of our season um, End it is ending in you know it's in a positive direction because of them putting a mirror to their face and just recognizing things that need to fix and need to get better. So I'm proud of our or our leaders for doing that. Any additional questions? All right, thank you very much, Coach Ivy. Thank you.